Welcome back guys to the camper van life. Anyway, the van don't start today, so that's my first error. But that'll be coming in my next video because I think I saw that issue. And the second thing is guys, the diesel heater, the Chinese diesel heater. Don't think it's so easy to install. The install is not bad, you can get the install, but when you start getting errors, it's impossible. I'm telling you now, this is my second day on it. I know, I had a video for you guys. I've done an insulation video, but because my insulation video didn't go well, it's not worth me putting that video up. But I'm gonna throw in a few tips, um, because I'm telling you now, you're gonna need some of these tips because it's gonna puzzle your brain. Trust me. And I haven't seen one YouTube video, example, showing you the fuel tank. You know, all they see, all you see is a tube going into the top of the cap and I fucked mine up, but then I realized what I'd done wrong. So I'm gonna show you what I've done wrong and then I'm gonna show you the right way. But this is about error codes as well. So my first error code, when I got everything installed, everything was pucker, glory, was the E6. So E slash 06, that was my first, first error code. And you could not find any information on Google. No information with the instructions they give you. All it says is um, check magnet priority horizontal sensor possession. Yeah, so come on, what's that mean? So I put that in Google, nothing. I put in the code in Google, nothing. I went to loads of forums, nothing. I've just joined one today because I've got one more code now. I think it's one more code. E slash zero zero and E slash 10, but I'll get to 10 in a minute. I'll solve 10. Well, I didn't solve 10. Uh, someone help me, I'm gonna put this channel up. Cause he's the one who told me about the EI3 and he's the one who told me about the E10. So I'm not taking credit. I just wanna help others because no one's showing these error codes on their channel. And you know, you buy these heaters and everyone thinks it's happy glory. Like it just works out of the box. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that guys. So, as I said, D06 is your fan stuck. So you have an intake and an outtake. Your intake, it's got like a screw vent. So all you do, you unscrew that and the case falls off and then your fan starts spinning. So that's your first code gone. So what I did, I took the fuse out, power it up again, then I've got another code. So my, my other code was um, E10. And as I said, I'll put his link down. Um, because I'm no expert on these diesel heaters. So that was a fuel line blockage. Um, obviously, when you get your item, they've been tested already, and it had fuel in my fuel pump. And when I undone the pump, it's got like a little screw at the top. I obviously opened it up, and it had like a little filter. What you've got to get a little screwdriver to take it out. That had held black bits in it. So I took the black bits out. Now the, the fuel's going in correctly. The issue I'm having now, is E slash zero zero. So, I primed the system already, I primed it about 10 times now. I'm still getting the same issue, guy. Um, what can I say it's doing? So basically it's trying to ignite, I think it is, because I sometimes I hear like a splatter like <laughs> But, I have lots of diesel coming out, of not the exhaust, the breathe, um, the breather pipe. So you get like a breather. And there's loads of fuel outside the van. So to me, it looks like it's flooded, but it's coming out of the wrong side. So I thought it's flooded, it can exhaust, but it's not. Um, that's about it. That's all I can really tell you guys. But I can tell you something, especially your fuel tank. If you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you'll see them have it at the top of the cap. And that's where I drilled my hole for my ignition, For the, you know, the bit where you put the fuel line on. Then I was thinking, how is it going to draw the fuel from the top without no straw, no line going into the tank? So I worked out, worked out, looked around the tank, looked around the tank, and then I found like a little square bit with a little tiny hole where you have to draw your own hole at the bottom of the tank and then get that. I'm going to show you the video now. Let me show you the video, my the way I've done it first, and that was wrong. Okie dokie, guys. So I come into one problem. The heat is all installed nicely. I haven't fired up yet because of this. Right, this has got like a little plastic bit inside it. Obviously, must probably to stop crap and let in not that much fuel. 
I screwed this in myself. And then I'm going to show you the correct way and the best way to do it. Oh, I found the solution, guys. I was puzzled forever. So the hole's got to be here. And the best way to do it, thread a curtain rail through, thread it inside the hole, and thread it down. And now you've just got to pull it and put the bolt on. Simple. best way I found to do it and it went in easy actually but don't make your hole too big you know measure the adapter you get and then do the way I do it it's been in you'll see what I'm talking about but yeah guys um anything else the clips what you get with it they're so cheap and when you tighten them up they keep slipping so get heavy duty clips go around the pipes you know like a hose pipe and you get like a jubilee clip get heavy duty ones um, the screws as well they're too short especially if you're drilling into your bodywork because you've got your plywood I don't know your carpet or your wood and then you've got your insulation and then you've got your um, uh, the metal you know the bodywork so those screws are no good plus when they do grip they loosen so you get proper um, screws um, that's about it oh yeah the fuel line the fuel line obviously mine is the back I wanted my fuel tank in the engine bay but because they gave me three meters I had to put it inside the van with in the garage basically and to be honest you don't really smell it but you do smell it when you fill it up so when you fill it up you're gonna get that little diesel smell and then you know if you've got ventilation you'll be alright but ventilate it or open up the doors for a bit but to be honest that 10 litre drum can hold about 20 pounds worth of diesel I won't recommend 20 pounds, I recommend about 15 quid because when you're driving, you know, you don't want no overspill because you've got like a little breather hole at the top. It's only small, but obviously mine's big now because I fucked up my fuel tank. So, hopefully this video you enjoy and like and subscribe guys. I'll try my best to help you with this diesel heater. I'm no expert, but I'll try to give you a few codes out there so you don't scratch your head like I did. So now, I'm going to try and get this E10 code, not E00 code, and then when I get it fired up, I will um, show you the performance. But let me show you now what it's doing, so obviously if someone knows the other code, you can give me a shout out, or comment below, let me show you. Okay, so that's where I've got it plugged in guys, um, so diesel heat is down there behind the water tank, the reason I've done that as well. So, the duct valve, I'm going to get, I don't know, five meters with an extender so I can have one inside here. So in those cold nights, my tank doesn't freeze and then I have one heating up the van, if that makes sense. And yes, I have tidied up. Look at that. Got a few tools in here. Got to do that still. But yeah, let's get back to the heater. Um, yeah, so the heater's over there and the intake goes into the garage. The reason I've done that, because obviously I've got like a little draft in the back door, so I'll get a bit of fresh air, and obviously it draws fresh air from the outside as well. So, everything's set up here. Let me just show you around the settings first. So it's 26 in here, 35 I set it as, 13.8 um, my battery voltage, and look, E00. So I've only got that code now, so if I start it up, on spinning the temperature thing here at the bottom you know you get like these little bars this doesn't move it just stays on one and obviously that 1428 is the time guys so don't worry about that and as I said I think I said it in this video if you want to get into the system it's 1688 and um, you can like set the way you want your machine basically so example if you want the power to be on mi medium and the temperature to be on 30 and when you press ok it just you know automatically hit those temperatures and obviously you've got timer and all that as well so obviously it's igniting now but I can't hear the diesel pump at the moment it's down there. I've got it on the wall as well So 
So it's got enough electric. Um, to be honest, it doesn't draw that much electric, to be honest. Um, I think the power up takes a bit. There you go. Can you hear it priming? I already primed this already, guys. So I don't have to keep priming it. It's got no air in the line. But let me show you outside in the van, and I'll just show you the, the diesel bit. Diesel outside. So, if anyone knows, I don't know if you can hear that. And that's it, guys, to be honest. It's not worth me just keep recording this because it's a bit boring. So, guys, if you know how to get this E00 code off, let me know. I'm going to upload this video for you now and um, hopefully you enjoy because um, that is some proper information you're going to need there, especially if you, can, especially if you come in the issues I've had. Now I can smell the diesel inside the van because it's bringing out that fresh air off the floor into the van so I've got to get out of here. Can you hear it speeding up? See it? It's cold air coming out of there. And it smells of diesel. Because obviously it's all on the floor. Okay guys, Hobbies and Gadgets signing out. I'll keep you posted and updated all these codes. See part two. Peace.